Microchips are everywhere. In 2020, in excess of 932 billion chips were made all over the planet, taking care of a 440 billion euros industry. They're at the heart of the devices that we use to work, travel, stay fit, and entertain ourselves. From cars to smartphones, and powering super-advanced quantum computers, or even controlling the next generation of weapons, including hypersonic aircraft that can fly over five times the speed of sound. It's hard to imagine a world without microchips. The world's best microchips are as small as a thumbnail and contain up to 15 billion transistors, which are tiny devices that send signals through a circuit. Each transistor is between 5 and 10 nanometers wide. In contrast, a single human hair has a width of 100,000 nanometers, and one company pretty much has a monopoly in semiconductor business, TSMC. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC is frequently regarded as a lesser-known company that runs the world due to its significant share of global chip production. In terms of our reliance on them, semiconductor chips are considered the new oil. TSMC supplies 92% of chips below 10 nanometers to the global market while Samsung is responsible for the remaining 8%. The reason automakers haven't been making enough cars is because of a shortage of these sophisticated chips, which are made by TSMC. Today, TSMC is a customer of the majority of the leading fabulous semiconductor companies, including AMD, Apple, Arm, Broadcom, Marvell, MediaTek, and NVIDIA. So, how did Taiwan Semiconductor emerges as the industry's dominant player? The fundamental technology, which gave Silicon Valley its name because the majority of chips are made of silicon, was actually developed in the United States. A third of the world's chips were produced in the United States in the 1990s. Today, the advanced chips are not produced in the United States. In the past, companies like Intel built and designed chips internally. However, in the beginning of 1980s, American businesses began to face competition from Japanese businesses. As a result, they began to outsource certain aspects of their operations that were costing them money, such as the costly factories that manufacture semiconductor chips. And this is when our hero Morris Chang enters the story. Morris Chang was born on July 10, 1931 in the Chinese city of Ningbo, which is a part of the Chikian province. Chang spent most of his early life in British Hong Kong between the ages of 6 and 11. When the Japanese took over Hong Kong in 1941, Chang's family had to move back to Shanghai and Ningbo for a few months before moving to Chongqing. In 1948, Chang again moved to Hong Kong because civil war started in China. His dream was to become a writer, but his father had other plans for him. Chang moved to the U.S. in 1949 in order to study at Harvard University. He later went to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology where he received his bachelor's in mechanical engineering in 1952 and master in 1953. In 1958, Chang was hired by Texas Instruments as an engineering manager. In 1964, he graduated from Stanford University with a Ph.D. in electrical engineering. In Texas Instruments, he spent 25 years working on cutting-edge semiconductor design and manufacturing processes. He became president and chairman of the nonprofit Research Institute ITRI in 1986. In 1987, at the age of 56, Morris Chang became the founder of TSMC, before the Taiwanese government offered him a chance to develop its semiconductor industry. Chang realized that starting a new business that made chips that could meet all of one's needs was a great idea. TSMC started as a collaboration between the government of Taiwan, the tech giant Philips, as well as private investors with an interest in semiconductor technology. However, at that time, the market was already dominated by established firms like Intel TI and NEC. Chang initially priced the chips at a loss in order to capture a larger market share in the hopes that costs would eventually decline sufficiently to provide a profit. His strategy was a great success. Although TSMC started two node processes behind its competitors at the time, it was able to break the one micron wafer processing barrier in 1991 replacing its six-inch 2 micron wafer processing fabrication. TSMC went public on the Taiwan Stock Exchange in September 1994. Four years later, TSMC would become the first Taiwanese company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. In 2005, Chang stepped down as CEO, but he was re-elected to the post four years later. His return came as TSMC began to expand into solar cells and light-emitting diodes (LEDs). Chang finally retired as CEO in 2018.
TSMC is a pure foundry that makes semiconductors for other businesses instead of selling its own chips. Its engineering power has enabled it to create the capacity to produce the low-power, high-performance processors that have been essential to the mobile revolution, thereby establishing its dominance in the market. In quarter 2 2021, TSMC accounted for 53% of global foundry revenue, making it the market leader. Taiwan was severely impacted by the global pandemic response in 2020. As a result, there was a significant shortage of chips and the shipping process was slowed. TSMC was basically to blame for all of the problems with chip shortages, which is bad, because it gives one company so much power. As a result, numerous governments worldwide have attempted to diversify chip production. For example, to encourage manufacturers like TSMC to construct semiconductor plants in the United States, Washington is providing $52 billion in subsidies. Additionally, TSMC has agreed to establish a research and development facility in Japan. Officially, TSMC will operate in the United States, Japan, Taiwan, and China by 2024, with additional locations under consideration. The European Union is attempting to surpass TSMC in 2 nanometer production. However, this will be extremely challenging. Nonetheless, Taiwan Semiconductor is currently the world's most significant chip manufacturer. It promises to begin manufacturing ultra-advanced 2 nanometer chips by 2025, and produces chips that are 2 nanometers smaller than those made in China. The technological rivalry between China and the United States has increasingly centered on semiconductors. The United States is concerned that a Chinese invasion of Taiwan could deny the rest of the world access to cutting-edge chips and give Beijing control of this crucial technology. China needs TSMC just as much as the United States does. But things are getting complicated as it finds itself caught in the middle of a tug of war between the two superpowers. As geopolitical tensions rise, Taiwan Semiconductor's importance on the world stage may be the island's greatest protection against any possible invasion. Because of TSMC's global strategic importance, academics at the U.S. Army War College recently wrote that the Taiwanese government should be ready to destroy the company's manufacturing facilities if China invades Taiwan. While TSMC is no doubt a monopoly, it could be argued that TSMC has thus far been an ethical monopoly. Semiconductors plants in the U.S. today, TSMC produces the best chips in the world. Apple and other major U.S. companies are now highly dependent on TSMC for the chips that go into iPhones, iPads, and various household appliances. Do you guys think about TSMC? Comment that down below. Also, if you appreciate TSMC's chips, leave a like.